Hey everyone, it's Millie. It's Gabby. And welcome back to another week of Change by Degrees. It is Why'd you be... say it that way? Okay. It's a six... <laughs> Sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a, well, almost 60 degree day, so you should be very happy. It's not 60 degrees I hope, yet. I want you to be animated, full of energy. I feel like all I we do you... at the beginning of every episode now but, is talk about the weather. Okay, because, because don't worry, once it's fully spring, then we won't, you know, be concerned about it. But it's just, I want to bring the energy up, dude. I like how we start with small talk, like the get, weather and stuff, and then jump then into get things. Into it. Yeah, actually, we ease actually, into it. I think we should just jump into it. Okay. Okay, no, no, go ahead. But you, we don't even saying? know. It's 92, number one, and I, we don't oh, even know what the title wow. is. Wow. I thought, man, I was so stuck on the temperature, and you're like, it's 92. I was like, it's not 92. <laughs> it's 92. <laughs> episode 92. Episode 92, and we didn't even talk about a title, so it'll just be episode 92. The working title is Historical Figures. That's really good. We'll, we have two people. And we always surprise each other with this is a fuzzy mic. And we'll always su- surprise each other Lint, with who we Linty, Lint, Linty um, who we like brought to the table. Okay. I think it'll be, I think it'll be good. I here's okay. The, my first person is always like a little bit of a goof and a gaff. It's a oh, real see, my person. My last person's a goof and a gaff. Okay, because I wanted to end. On, I don't, like, I don't though. admire him at all. Well, I do a little bit uh, for one thing. He why did. would you? No, 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 because it's, a goof. it's a goof. It's a goof. It's a goof. I don't hate him. I just like don't. He's not one of those people where I'm like, oh, I remember first learning about him. Like, it's a, it's a goof, but he cracks me up. Okay, so we'll open with a goof. Oh, we're opening close with a goof. goof. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. And okay. then we will be serious towards the, the middle. You know, meet the content. So if you want to skip ahead five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, like, I actually tried to do research on this person, but the, the reason. too. I just. But goof. you really didn't like him. Okay. No, no, no I don't I, not like him. It's just, you know, it's a goof. It's a goof. Like, <laughs> it's just. It's goof. The reason mine is goof is because <laughs> this is a character in the Tudors. Oh my but god. <laughs> Why? Let me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you though. Like this is serious. I love her. I love her and I wanted to actually explain some more. Let's put some more meat on her bones in the history, in the annals of history. You might as well just say her name but and go first. I am. Oh, okay. This is the goof. This is Catherine of Aragon. Okay, but here's the thing. The reason this was brought up to mind, and, yeah. and you're going to really like this this chick, is because in the series that we started watching, Wheels of... Okay. Because you couldn't place the <laughs> I actress. Love, cause I love... Yes. Number one, my story to share. And number okay. two, I'm not going to be... I don't know who, but at least I respect this chick. Your, your goof is like a person who... I respect him for one with, thing he did. Which is so... I respect this lady for a lot of things but oh, okay. yes i couldn't place the actress and she's like the hippie of the woods right okay please yeah preface no one knows what you're talking about wheels of time okay wheels which is a time. series on amazon mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i'll provide context um tell me when you're done no i'm just trying to help the people because i know no one knows what you're talking about like i barely know what you're talking about and i watched this with you it's an amazon series called wheel of time and the actress who plays some random chick i don't even know who the she hippie plays. queen okay. from the forest Sh- sure okay. i don't remember that but Oh, you're right. You're right. That was the last episode we watched. Okay. Uh huh. Um, I'd like to back. Keep, it was a week ago, <laughs> we so I'm to like keep watching. <laughs> so, yes, but we couldn't place the actress because her hair was different, whatever, and it was like years. It's been years since she did that little role. Uh, uh, but we found out her name. We googled yes, her, and, and she's, she's the one Tudors. who plays this character that I researched. So it brought up to mind, and since the Tudors has been such a pivotal part of our podcast, it like came together in a beautiful union, and I wanted to talk about... Ew, what? <laughs> and I wanted to talk about this, uh, this lady, okay? okay? So let me try to... Since it's a goof, let me try to get through this. Okay. So she was born December 16th, 1485. Old she's and pasta, 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 passed, passed away. Oh, in January. <laughs> January. <laughs> Thought you were like, and she passed. Uh, I'm like, this. it passed away January seventh, fifteen thirty six. Okay, and when I was doing research for this, then I remembered that not via the tutors, but there's another series that came out much, much, much later that I did watch called The Spanish Princess, which uh-huh. is part of this series of like the White Princess, the Spanish Princess. That sounds bad, but like. So- <laughs> It's like what? <laughs> um, but it's like three seasons of this like type of series. I think it was Netflix. It was either Netflix or Prime. And it was about her. Now they do a super exaggerated, like not realistic, very 
fictional version of this character. But I was like, oh, that's so funny. So there is a series on her, but it has like very loosely related to history. So I'm going to give you the real stuff. Okay. So usually the reason that I wanted to kind of dig deeper is that all that you know from this lady is that she was married to Henry VIII. I was really cracking up also because when I saw Henry so many times, I'm like, ah, oh, Henry Cavill. But no, no, two, two different men. Um, it was just a little funny to me. I'm sure. Because um, they don't look like that last portrait uh, no, of his. No, they do not. <laughs> but maybe they're related, dude. Wait, who are we talking about? And this and the guy who played no oh Henry the I, that's maybe what was like deep oh ancestor. the real one no that's not no true no you don't think so I'm gonna DM Henry and ask <clears throat> and ask him yeah but yes all that we know usually from this woman is the man she was married to um and uh the original man that she was married to which was Henry's brother Arthur but he died like six months in uh and that she was the mom of Mary who although terrible was the first queen in her own right in English history. <clears throat> the way I don't remember any of this from the Tudors. Like, I love did how, any of this happen? Yes. It's wild. I don't Dude, remember any uh, well, of no, I don't think Mary comes to um like to reign in the series. Oh. But you know, Bloody Mary. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so that yes. wasn't I was but, like, but I you not do not see any well of this. also in the series you don't <laughs> see her marriage to Arthur. You just okay. see you start with her being married, married to, Henry. to Henry. Okay. Um, but when Arthur did die, and while she was kind of waiting for Henry to come to power, because then that's when she married him, she was the first woman to hold the position of ambassador. Um, and she was the ambassador for the, I'm going to say this wrong, Aragonese crown, the Spanish crown. So I was like, oh, that's what she held it for uh, however long she waited to get married. So I was like, that's really, really <laughs> cool. Uh, and in 1513, she served as regent for six months while Henry was in France. Okay, fighting another war that didn't matter. She was fighting. Good. Yeah. Um, and this um, period of time is what Spanish princess covers. Like I said, Tudor doesn't cover crap about her. It's not about uh, Catherine. It's about Henry. Um, but in Spanish princess. She looked princess, about 50 years old in that series too. What, in Wheels of Time? No, no, in the, the other one. She, I was going to say, she, she looks she pretty the real good for person, her. Was the real per but she looks much older. Well, than, they were she married. Good, but she looked much older than Henry. Are they supposed to be the same age or it was actually in real life she like much older? No, well, the thing is, she was 16 when she was oh, widowed. Shoot. So okay. she so, was a young, but they were married they got, for like, the longest. They, they got, were married like, for like the, 20 years. Oh, wait, when she got married at 16? No, no, no. She was widowed, oh, and widowed I forget how many. Yeah, yeah. And but she got married a few years after. Her and Henry so. were married for twenty years. Yeah, really oh, long. Okay. And the thing is, he broke off, chose to broke off without the Pope's. Right, I remember. You know, that. thing. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and so, but she, she was beloved by England, and still said, even though this horrible man said he doesn't want to be married to me anymore, she was like, but I am still married to him, even while so he was dating. Dead. She was Anne Catholic. Uh, this yes. is coming back to me. But, right, here's the thing. Okay. but here's the thing about it is that, number one, you know that she was Henry's wife, even though she did stuff in her own right. And the fact that people portray her, which I think they did in the series, as like this stubborn, old, pious woman, Catholic mm -hmm. woman, which, yes, she was. She was very religious, but... You know, if you actually look at what she did, she was very charismatic, um, intelligent, and really because of her parents, which were, I have it written down here, um, Isabel and Ferdinand of Aragon, hmm. and Isabel was of Castile, uh, and they Dem sent fought Columbus. <laughs> right? I love how the you're same like, one? let me add this little no, fact. I don't same... want to say something that's wrong, but uh, it's how many okay. Isabel and Ferdinands could depress? Okay, okay. Well, no, because this is. Oh, no. Right? Well, it's fair. Ferdinand no, wait, am the I second. Stupid? Am I stupid? And it's Isabel the first. I might be stupid. I'm so sorry. Let me go back to fourth grade history. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that might be right. But if they did Columbus, they did that. But what they also did is fought the Moorish Wars. So, like, Catherine was brought up in, like, this very war time of history where her parents were literally going and fighting all these wars. And she's used to that. And so while she was serving as regent for six months, she had to fight a war with Scotland and King James. Okay. What is that face? I'm just, that's a lot of war. So, <laughs> that's a lot of war. So Henry was fighting in France, uh, a war that really ended up being kind of dumb because it had no bared no fruit because in less than a year diplomatically he sucked. And so it made was no that, impact. Was that the official, uh, 
like he sucked he did as a ruler Uh, just absolutely sucked um (laughs) but henry left a group of advisors um for catherine that she was like i don't need these men i'm gonna do it myself and she was a very active participant in politics in her uh, country's economy and she was running stuff and then had to fight in this war against um scotland which is called the battle of flodden now in spanish flodden Flodden. in um spanish princess they make this overly dramatic and like just a speech and she's supposedly not that this is proven she might have been pregnant now she a lot of her pregnancies ended in miscarriage or stillborn other than mary um so the whole like tale of this is that she was pregnant and had armor like was like going into battle um she didn't participate in the battle because actually the battle was won by the time she was got there. Um, <laughs> they but, couldn't tell but the her that ahead though, of time. No, they no, couldn't well, send a text, she didn't know. dude. Come on, dog. Wow, they couldn't like. No, <laughs> couldn't I'm so tired. Tweet her. She was on her horsey going to Northumberland and um, didn't make it. It was already won, but she had planned like a battle plan, you know, wrote some letters to people in the different villages and she also roasted them for not replying quick enough. So she was doing stuff to make this happen. Oh, yeah. I would and have been so was pissed the, off. At the, these men were like, well, yeah. we're not going to reply. And then like, you're on your way and they're like, never mind. We already did the thing. And I'm like, well, I just did all this <laughs> Well, it was just work. in case, like in case, for example, they had lost, it was kind of, um, what do you call that? Reinforcements. Mm-hmm. So she was coming with reinforcements and fully intending to be participate in the battle if she needed to. Because again, her parents were like savages. Good, so good, um, good. <laughs> like I said, she's not like this old whiny person uh, who would just be in church praying. She would go and ride out in battle if she needed to um so yes uh the other accomplishments she had i have a screenshot of them oh, because i, I t- took a lot of notes but then i did screenshot something so <clears throat> um she commissioned the education of christian woman which sounds again very poor but poor. The, the the book basically argued that women were intellectually equal if not superior to men she said superior Sup- <laughs> And stress the, and I thought you would like, well, okay. Stress the intellectual companionship <laughs> versus uh, the, the, the focus in marriage that it's more important to like be smart and have conversation than just make kids. I'm so dead. Um, I like how you're like, you would like that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you arrogant. <laughs> uh. um, so that was good. That was cool. Um, that was cool. And here are the other things because I couldn't cover everything and this was just a goof and a gaff. But um. <laughs> Catherine's impression of people was like very warm. She was beloved by the people and even her enemy, Thomas Cromwell. Do you remember him from the uh, series? Was that the guy? I mean, I know the name from history, but I'm trying to think of the actor. Is that Mm -hmm. the guy that was bald or had like bald? He was balding. Was that the guy? Yeah. He would would be talking to Henry or whatever and Henry would be yelling and raving and everything. And he'd just kind of be standing there like, sis, what? Was that the guy? I don't remember him as being bald. I remember okay. the character. Who was the guy that Henry? Well, he yelled at everybody, but the he guy that was like his like right hand guy, and he would be like th- rant and raving. Oh no, that's not him. Oh. Also, that also was uh, Henry. No, no, no. I know who Cavill. Henry is. I know that. Okay, I know who Henry Cavill played. Okay. Not him. I would. I know. I know him. <laughs> I know his face. I know who that is. But yes, it was like his closest advi- advisor. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think. Thomas yeah, Carmel. but I do remember that whole plot. Line. And yes. so basically, this and it was her enemy because it was her downfall. Right. Um, said of her, if not for her sex, she could have defied all the heroes of history. So sexist, but okay. It's like a backhanded he made compliment. That. Yes, really. <laughs> um. And then some of her other accomplishment, accomplishments was that she successfully appealed for the lives of the rebels involved in the evil May Day for the sake of the families um, and also uh, was very admired for starting an extensive program for the relief of the poor. She was a patron of Renaissance humanism and a friend of the great scholars Erasmus of Rotterdam and Thomas More. So Thomas she was, Moore, that's the guy I was thinking. Wasn't he in the oh, series? Yes, also. Yes, yes. Okay. I think they both were. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to give a little bit more background because usually all you know is that she was married and continued to try to not pretend to be married. Oh, well. He wasn't officially divorced. He like divorced himself because he became the head of the church, but whatever. Um, and then she stayed, what was the, the castle called for the rest of her life? Oh, right. Um, I, banished okay. to, can't even remember my own handwriting. It starts with a K. Where? Some castle. 
I can look Where? it up later. This one, dude. I was like, that's a Q. No. Oh, I was looking King, at Oh, this. no. Queen of England. Yeah. Kim, Kim, Don't worry. Kim, that, Kim, I, it's Kim like your Talian. reports, dude. It, okay. No, it's not Kim Talian. Some <laughs> castle. <laughs> she stayed for the rest well, of her life Kim there Talian. until uh, she died of cancer. But she did lots of things. Like she won a war that honestly was, it kept Scotland off their backs for a whole generation. Unlike Henry who fooled around in France. So. Fooled around. And did all sorts of stuff. She helped the poor people. She wrote this or commissioned this book to be written and had a lot of thoughts. And she was, again, very charismatic and beloved and not like this old Catholic person who was praying in the church all day. <laughs> that's literally all I remember from her. From exactly. So like, I'm like, and I think that sometimes that's how women are portrayed in history. So no, this goof and a gaff. I like she it. She did some stuff. She did some stuff. Okay? She had things to say. And now I'm going to see how she's like the hippie forest queen in, in this other Wheel series. Wheel of Time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's cool. when you texted me last night and you were like, I think I have one person that was her. So I was like, oh, I'm curious what oh. else other than what I learned from the tutors. And then I forgot that I watched Spanish Princess, but that was very exaggerated form of her life. Um, but I was like, ah, let me find out a little I more about I forgot her. everything about her, to be honest. <clears throat> I mean, I forget I'm most things in that surprised. series, but like, yeah, like literally cool. Didn't know any of that. Yeah, none of that was highlighted in the tutors. Big surprise. All exactly. I know is that like every Henry. other scene was her being like, why? Well, praying and yeah, being pray. upset because yeah. she was Catholic. And then when she had Mary, being like, why don't you love my daughter? And he yeah. was like, because she's a girl. And I was like, what is happening? Yeah. Um. And or no, he did. Or no, no, he didn't like Mary because then what's her face well, had a different he, daughter and he like preferred. That one or something. I don't know. Well, he still, he just wanted a male heir, but yes, right. The only reason he preferred the other daughter was because it, it was came the from new chick, not from her. What's his? But then he tried to like get back with Mary, and it was a toxic relationship. But all she was around, like, but um, I already blocked the, you. We can't. No, we're not doing this. I blocked you on literally I mean, here's the every thing. platform. Considering Mary's reign, she obviously had a few issues. Maybe she had some daddy issues or something. Um some resentment in there mm. but it's okay like i said she was the first english queen in her own right not just because her husband was the king so go off there you go i'll support that uh, it was just uh also a bloody rain dude the the air Ar- yeah. the aragon line was uh very violent i think they're- maybe you know what they probably were dude what they were probably eights enneagram eight i'm done enneagram eight no they're probably enneagram ones dude you gotta have a lot of like strategic to, to be war. able to execute all, wars, all that stuff. Keep all that, she was on top of it. it. Literally, it'd be one of those things like, because I don't know how people keep that stuff. Well, I mean, I guess your life depends on it, so you keep it straight. <laughs> but like being like, we're in, we're involved in six wars right now. I'd be like, wait, what are we doing? Who are we invading? Why? What's our problem with I'm them so again? I'm so dead. I'm so dead. It's like the Greeks outside It was of, very uh, obvious. Well, James, when, when Henry left, um, King James of Scotland, so I was like, I want to get famous and and defeat and defeat uh, I like i love that yeah. motive i want to get scotland famous. scotland was uh france's ally so they were like oh y'all are exposed i'm gonna go attack but his wife was pregnant and didn't want him to go into war but he didn't listen to his wife and so he ended up dead and actually good for catherine him. sent henry his bloody turncoat and was like i want this for you thank god thanks like that's thanks be real, to god real. so you thank god husband and was like, I'll keep dealing. Because with, I'm Catholic. I'll keep dealing with. <laughs> technically, they both were, but and she was like, I'll keep holding it down until you get back. Wasn't he Protestant? Playing around. Well, because he separated from the church. Yeah, exactly. But at the at the time where she sent that bloody nah. uh, James bloody coat, nah. 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 Even even from right there, he's like, actually, I don't want to. He's be like, I don't know what you call it. But it was a I'm very nice Catholic. marriage <laughs> for a very long time. He got tired of it, and he got tired That's of her, okay. which is really sad. Yeah, sometimes you get tired of. It. Yeah, you just don't want to be married to the. She's Catholic, and she talks about Catholic things. And Once too. again, that's how she was portrayed in history, but she was very charismatic. <laughs> okay. I didn't... You can be Catholic and charismatic. Also not a lie, yeah. but she did things, so poor cool. her, but now people know. <clears throat> now people know. Now we're educated. Story. Now you're educated. About- so I can't wait to get educated by you before you present this goof. I'm not doing the goof right now. I know, so that's why I'm going to be educated. Oh, but well, you'll be educated with the goof, too. I think it's a good goof. For, I think it's hilarious. It's not that funny. Well, we'll see. Anyway, I'm not there yet. Okay, so I didn't. Write Usually, when out. you're like, I'm gonna have add a little goof. It's not because I think we did historical so events once too. No, we did and historical you, figures, talk- and I added a historical event. event. That's oh, when they whipped gosh. the uh, yes. ocean. Oh yeah, <laughs> cracks me up. They were like, "Stupid ocean, go get the chains!" And the Dude. and they started whipping it, punishing it. All of your goofs are like 
I love you, but it's okay. But it's so funny because it's like it actually happened. And mm-hmm. not just like making And that's it up. when like whether it's hundreds of years ago or today, people are stupid. <laughs> and history proves that. So I wish that would be in the news one day. Like we whipped the ocean. Whipped the we whop whopped. We whopped. <laughs> <laughs> we whopped. Is that the past tense of what is that? We whopped the ocean. No, we whipped the Potomac River in our backyard. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine a bunch of wood with Brigidians. Whips the Potomac River. Yeah. They uh <laughs> You know, they were like, the ocean's not behaving for us. We need to punish it. I agree. I, I would join the crowd. It must have. The know. eights probably ran that crowd. Dude, I would do it. I know you would. I would organize that. <laughs> Be like, guys, you know what we should do right now? We should, we should not, not whip a war, the water. But you would whip the water. Well, they couldn't get across the strait to get into the war, well, to that's invade. Why, that's so they why were they like, did what they stupid did. ocean. That's why they did what they did. Anyway. It's okay. But my goof will <laughs> come later. Right now I'm doing a. A serious thing. A, well, not a serious thing, but you know. A thing I actually was like enjoying because okay. I actually wrote a paper. I wrote a paper on these on these people when I was in like sixth grade, and then when I was thinking, about it, I was like, "Oh man, like I used to be so obsessed with them." Let me bring let me bring them. Back I thought around. you were saying college, no, in sixth grade. No, okay, in sixth okay, grade, okay. I wrote a paper on them, and I remember writing this paper on them, and I remember getting up to present it because we had to present our papers. You know, in elementary school, that's huh. really random. I, I I wrote like a little a paragraph on George Washington Carver, and I was very fascinated. And I was like, "How do people who have a peanut allergy feel about him?" That should have been your opening line. But honestly, I should have. Classmates, picked. raise your hand if you have a peanut allergy. <laughs> All right, you. How do you feel now about George Washington Carver? Because let me tell you, guy. I was so close. So <laughs> close. But yes, in sixth grade, you met this uh, man this or woman. Pe- well, it's two brothers. Oh, okay. Yeah, Cute. the Nicholas brothers. Vaguely, applause. Vaguely, <laughs> like a vaguely pause for applause. And somewhere in my brain, I may know this. <laughs> Maybe. So um, they were tap dancers and uh, dancers <clears throat> in general back in, during the Harlem Renaissance. And it's Black History Month, so this I was like, to, you know this what? This is about to come together so wonderfully. Continue. Is it? Wait, yes, do you have it a goof is. next to your, no. your, 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 your serious? You did my your goof. My serious one. So yeah, my serious one. Is it a is, is musician or something? Harlem. No. Okay. I always well, go with, you, I always find writers that I really get obsessed oh, with. Oh, you got a anyway. you got a writer of the Harlem Renaissance. Oh, snap. I think it's gonna come together. Kidding, she probably me. knew them because actually, she opened a school. Who uh, is it? For, don't tell for... me. I'll see in like a few minutes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 I okay, love good. how this like uh, it always does. Somehow. Meshing. It's meshing together. Well, it's meshing my well. okay. Well, my last one is out of left field. So. But that always you know That's you always true. ruin it. So oh, okay. Well, yours your first one was out of left field, dude. The two the two in the middle will mesh. The two in the middle. We've talked about the tutors and we're watching Wheels of Time connection okay but the two in the middle will mesh and then yours remember our little your first okay i'm not gonna argue with you it's totally fine because it's fine okay so the nicholas brothers um the oldest brother was fayard and harold uh was the younger and fayard and harold farrell harold oh harold fayard 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 was born in 1914 and harold was born in 1921 um, they are known as tap dancers and acrobatic dancers, and they came to mo- their most popular time was during the Harlem Renaissance. Mm. Um, and they grew up in Philly. Their parents were educated musicians. They went to school for music. Their mother played Love piano, it. and their father played drums. I think. Oh wow! Um, and they they were part of their mother and father had formed like their own band. And they I'm would so play, obsessed. They would play with whoever else in this band at um, on stage, and so. Fayard, when he was growing up, because he, he was the oldest, um, he remembers like watching his parents on stage, and he would sit in the front row when their parents were literally like at work, and he would sit there and watch the musicians. Um, uh, so neither Fayard or Harold had any formal dance training. Mm. Fayard taught himself how to dance, and then when he, Harold was born and was old enough to like walk and stuff, he would then and he they had other siblings and they had a sister, but they would he would go home and he would teach them how to dance. Like tap um, dance? At, at this time, it was pretty much anything. It was just dancing okay. and movement and stuff. Um, and he also learned like different tricks because he would watch, besides watching his parents, mm-hmm. they had other live performances yeah. happening at where his parent, the theater in Work. Philly, uh-huh. would, um, that he would watch other performances there. And um, so he would learn like, he taught himself like acrobatics and stuff mm. like that. And he would teach it to his younger siblings. So um, he taught it to his, like I said, I think he, they also had a sister, but Harold really took to it and so they became the nicholas brothers because their parents were like y'all are good enough to be mm-hmm. doing stuff so and because their parents like worked at a theater they pretty much yeah. had an in to be on stage um so they were first hired by a radio program um and then they began to perform at small theaters throughout philadelphia 
1932, they became the featured act at Harlem's Cotton Club when Harold was 11 and Fayard was 18. And I found this really interesting, but... 11. 11, yeah. Wow. Um, they astonished their mainly white audiences dancing to the jazz tempos of Bugle Call Rag. Mm. And um, they were the only entertainers in the entire place that were black. Mm. And uh, they performed for a white audience and they were on stage with white performers. They were the only black people allowed in the theater. So they weren't allowed to have... Um, because obviously this is like way before like any type of civil rights movement, but um, they were uh, the only black entertainers. And not only that, they were only black people allowed in this, in the, so people right. who wanted to come watch who were black couldn't, even though right. they're black people on stage. So this place only allowed Harold and Fayard to be in the place with everybody who was white. Um, and then oh, also, they also, besides being on stage, they were also allowed to mingle with white patrons afterwards. They were mm. allowed to go around and talk to people and stuff like that. Because people also wanted to talk to them because they were extremely talented. Yeah. And they were doing, at this time, I don't think they were specifically doing just tap dance. Although Those their dancing was always like multiple genres. So like even if they were doing tap dance, mm. it would still be very acrobatic. Mm-hmm. Um, they were never formally trained as children. So like whatever they were doing was extremely unique because it's mm. not like anybody else on stage was doing it because they didn't have any, they didn't have the same training that everybody else had. Right. Um, and then they began to appear in movies, not Hollywood movies, but like small movies, like vaudeville kind of stuff. Yes. Um, I haven't heard that word in so long. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> um, and they obviously attributed their success to their unique style of dancing which was in demand during this time. And so, yeah, like I said, it was a hybrid of tap dance, ballet, and acrobatics. And it became known as like flash dancing because it was just super flashy. And um, Their first Hollywood movie was in 1934 and the movie was called Kid Millions. Um, then they began to uh, perform in like smaller roles in other movies and Hollywood films. And mm. George Balanchine, who if you're like... Well, I am. But if you're a person who knows the dance world, George Balanchine was extremely influential in the ballet world um, during this time. And we still there's different um, moves and things named after him and different steps named after him um, that we still use today. And he there's it's a whole st- like a whole st- branch of ballet is called like a Balanchine style. So if you're doing something in the Balanchine mm-hmm. style, it's different than a different style and blah, blah, blah. So he's extremely influential in that regard. And I grew up hearing his name all the time in my dance classes. But so he uh, saw one of the movies they were featured in and he was really impressed with uh, the Nicholas brothers. So he invited them to be in a movie that he was choreographing called Babes in Arms. Um, and so then not only that, but they, he decided that he wanted to also train them and actually give them a formal dance training mm. um, and like a dance um, education. So he taught them new stunts and um, actually like, trained them as ballet dancers. So they got a formal education kind of in that sense when they were older. This was around the 1930s. Um, And uh, then people began to think that they actually had been trained as ballet dancers from like a very early age. And they were like, no, George Balanchine just kind of like threw stuff at us and we just kind of did it because they were just so talented. Um, In 1940, they had moved to Hollywood and they performed in Hollywood in nightclubs, in movies, um, in theaters, and they would travel around and do... um, like television and different tours. And they traveled all the way from North America and Latin America to Europe, um, to South America. They did like world tours of people just wanted to come see them dance. Um, And then they toured England with production of Blackbirds and they gave a performance for King George in 1948. Mm -hmm. So they performed for the King. Um, In 1991, the Nicholas brothers received Kennedy Center honors to recognize their achievements that spanned 60 years. They then, this is like my favorite part because Mm -hmm. I think it's like so cool because I know, well, most people like know these people, but so the Nicholas brothers, then after they kind of retired being on stage, they began to teach. They Mm -hmm. taught a master class in tap dance um, at Harvard University and Radcliffe. Um, among their known, among their known students is Debbie Allen, who is extremely influential in the dance world today. I follow her on Instagram. Um, (laughs) but I've always loved. Isn't that the one who did the, uh, Instagram live? Like, yeah, she would do like, yeah, yeah. Debbie Allen. And she was in, um, uh, uh, fame and she was also she's just she's taught several um, dancers who are really big today she has connections mm-hmm. to them um, but she has her own dance company uh, now but um, but yeah she's extremely influential in the dance world uh, Debbie Allen and then they also taught Janet Jackson and Michael Jackson how to dance um, and then they also taught several of today's master tap dancers um, 
from like the 1990s through like well they're the Nicholas brothers are dead now. Fayard mm-hmm. died in 2000, 2000, I think, and Nicholas of like a heart complication or something. He had a heart attack after a surgery or something. And Nicholas died in 2006 um, from pneumonia or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, their personal lives are pretty like not uneventful. They were both married three separate times, I think. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, <laughs> <He said> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, they both have kids. I think mm. Fayard had like two and Harold maybe one. Mm-hmm. And um, Fayard's grandchildren, Fayard has granddaughters who are now mm. called the Nicholas sisters and they Aww, go and dance, which I thought was so really cute. cute. Um, and then the other thing that uh, was their most famous thing that they did was their performance in the musical number Jump and Jive, which was in 1943 in a movie called Stormy Weather. And it has been praised as one of the most virtuosic film dance routines of all time, which I, when I was writing this report in sixth grade, I remember I watched this. Mm. It's like, I don't know, maybe like five minute routine, maybe. It is like insane. You're like, how are these people, they're tap dancing, they're doing acrobatics. The the most famous scene that people might not know what it's from or who it is, but they probably, they might have seen it before is when they go to the, you should just look it up because it's just like, it's just insane. Like they go to like the top of this, this huge staircase and they have like these really big stairs and they start jumping over each other and mm. every time they jump over each other they land in splits and then the other one jumps over and lands in splits wow. and they just do that all the way down the staircase and it's like insane um yeah and they were performing with like it, during that scene and stormy weather they're performing with like a orchestra that was really famous at the time too and once again i think they were the only black people in the um in the film mm. But um, but yeah, they just made like huge strides for the dance world and then went on to teach Debbie Allen, Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson, like as well as like a lot of other. Which tons of people know nowadays. Oh, yeah. Even like, know them. I mean, come on. Like, yeah, yeah Michael just Jackson, he's one of like the greatest dancers of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, And so it's just really insane how like people don't know they're they're not they're not super well known. Right. But, but they have know, such like, influence yeah. over like the people we know today. So they're pretty cool. Um, just go Google their stuff because you could, I could watch them dance all day. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know I love dancing, but like they're, they're so entertaining and they're so charismatic and everything they do, of course they make it look so easy, but you know, it takes like years of, I want to say years of training, but they weren't, really, they weren't trained. They're just talented. Um, and yeah, so they're pretty cool and I'm glad they got their flowers when they were here, their Kennedy mm-hmm. center honors. Cause a lot of times people are honored like posthumously right. and you wish that when they were alive, they knew how great people they were and people people them. loved them yeah. and appreciated them so i'm glad that they got Kennedy center honors in the 1990s and they were actually recognized when they were here so mm. yep those That's, my people those are your people those are my people those are people they probably knew the little lady that i'm about to talk about right now they probably did um I'm just going to jump right into it. But that's really amazing. And I, so uh, my lady is Olivia Ward Bush Banks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now Bush and Banks were the names of, the last names of uh, both of her husbands. Uh-huh. So I'm just going to say Olivia Ward was her original name. And her birthday, is com- I mean, she just passed away, but her birthday's coming up February 27th, cool. uh, 1869. And she passed away April 8th, 1944. Um, so as a general introduction, she's an author who wrote poems, because once again, it's Black History Month. Mm-hmm. Um, so she wrote, get it in. she wrote poems on her heritage and biracial identity. She was Black and Native American. Mm. And uh, she was Montaukit. I think that's how you say it. Montaukit, mm. and Native American. So her mom was Eliza Draper, and she was mm-hmm. Black and Montaukit. So the same as, you know, Olivia mm-hmm. Ward. And then her father was Abraham Ward. He was Portuguese. East Indian and Black. So, so what she mixture. wrote, a whole mixture, but she wrote on um, being Native American mm-hmm. and being Black. Um, so I'm just going to breeze past her marriages, not to make light of it, but I'm going to get to her work. So in 1889, she was married to Frank Bush and had two daughters, Rosamond and Maria. She divorced in 1895 and then married again, like almost 20 years later, uh, to Anthony Banks in 1916. And they had no kids. Uh, and I think she stayed married to him until she passed away. Um, so the her work began when she divorced for the first time. She, I'm going to call her a single mother because she had to support her two daughters and her um, elderly aunt. 
Um, so while she was working on all sorts of things, she wrote and published her first book of poetry called Original Poems in 1899. And I don't know if you know this man, but with this original work, she received excellent reviews from Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Yes, I love Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Okay. I've actually been I, to I his grave. You have you? I have, because he's buried in the same um, cemetery that my grandfather's buried in, that my oh, wow. dad's dad is buried in. It's a huge cemetery in Ohio. Mm. And uh, the Wright brothers are buried there. And Paul Lawrence Dunbar is buried there oh, as well. Famous peeps. Yeah. But so he reviewed her first work and said, mm -hmm. this is really, really good. So I was like, oh, okay, I'm sure Gabby would know this name. Mm -hmm. um, so her um, that was her first piece of work. And then by 1900, she was working as the assistant theater director at the Robert Gould Show Settlement House in Boston until 1914. So that's about almost 15 years. Um, and while she was working, she was interested in her mother's and her aunt's, uh, Maria, the elderly mm -hmm. aunt's, um, Montauket culture, like her heritage. So while she was working at this um, uh, settlement house, she also worked as the Montauket tribal historian and published more um, substantial volume of poetry called Driftwood. And I don't know if you know this word. Mm, no. um, and it was this more popular. And it was published in 1914. So at the end of her work mm. in the settlement house, and as she was working as a historian, um, then she published Driftwood, which is a little bit bigger than the original volume of poetry. So at the end of that, in 1918, she moved to Chicago with her new husband, finally, and <laughs> wrote a play called Indian Trails, or Trail of Montauk. And uh, this is probably, people think it's in reaction to the New York State State <laughs> Supreme Court decision. Uh, and I can't pronounce this guy's name, but it's a pharaoh, like a chief, an Indian chief. So Wandonk versus Jane Benson. And it kind of reminded me of Hidalgo, which we watched Hidalgo. recently too. And um, this Supreme Court decision was kind of monumental because basically this pharaoh who was Montauk, um, Montonkin, uh, was arguing for his people and there was like less than a hundred left to be able to graze in the fields, work them, live in them. And that was what the case was about. But basically the, it ended up, the, the judge ended up saying that the Montauk tribe of Indians has disintegrated and been absorbed into the mass of citizens. Boo. So not not even Boo. that they can't use the land, but he basically said, y'all don't exist anymore, <sighs> Yeah, which like sucks. That but sucks. this yeah. play was kind of, people think it's in reaction to that. Mm. And after she made that um, work, then she moved... Um, not to the other side, but she spoke and wrote more about the black experience. Mm -hmm. So she was in Chicago, was be which was becoming an urban center of black life, music, and culture um, due to the great migration. And while she was in Chicago, she became a regular contributor of uh, the Colored America magazine. She helped the sculptor, I didn't know this man, but I knew the other one, uh, Richmond Barth. He was a sculptor and author, poet Langston Hughes, Langston. Which, you, which you mentioned. I think you mentioned him I think in I've one of the episodes. Before, yeah. um, and the she first. kind of helped them get their starts during the Harlem cool. re Renaissance. Um, her writing surrounded the struggles and need for change for black Americans and her faith also. She mm -hmm. also spoke about that. And then this is the school that I thought maybe your brothers were at. And she established the Bush Bank School of Expression in Chicago which was mm. um, open during the 1920s. And this was for black artists, whether they were poets, musicians. I'm sure dancers were welcome. Probably. And she just kind of supported that because she had um, experience in being like a director for the arts. Maybe they performed there. At one Probably, point. honestly. Probably. I'd have to, yeah. I want to research it now and see if those two connect. In the 1930s, she served as the drama coach in New York for the Work Progress Administration Program and wrote for Westchester Record Courier. Um, now the, the work that she did as a drama coach was located at the Abyssinian Baptist Church Community Center, which was an important location for both secular and religious music and art during the Harlem Renaissance. So she was super, super involved with that. Um, and then, so, uh, as I did more research, you know, people talked about during her life, she wrote several p plays and short mm -hmm. stories, but most were never published because they expressed issues of interracial culture. Mm. So we obviously know her work surrounding Native American culture and then her work surrounding, you know, black culture um, and social commentary. But the, the works that she made that were interracial really didn't get an, 
a whole lot of attention or just weren't published. Which is so um, funny because a lot of black people today have Native American mm-hmm. roots. So like, it's just funny. I'm like, it's like. Wait, and, and it was kind of saddening. And it reminded me of um, our, my boss, not just Carl, my boss, Tim. He has a project <laughs> coming out called The 50 Project on Interracial Marriage. And I was like, well, I'm glad. Like, if it was 60 years ago, Mm-hmm. It wouldn't have gotten any attention. Right. Um, even nowadays, people don't talk about it, uh, you know, as much as other things. But um, even though those works were, you know, mostly not published, um, her work still is noted for preserving regional and ethnic dialects that would other otherwise have no written record. So she tried to include it mm-hmm. in the works that were published. Um, and she worked of, wrote about the Native American experience in her work, preserving the Algonquian I said that right, Montauk language and folklore. So as she always attempted to incorporate it in her work, it's just the works that were specifically on her interracial experience. It just didn't get as much attention or weren't published, which I thought was really sad. Mm -hmm. But if you did enough research, she tried to sprinkle it in in whatever she was writing or working on. And I just thought she was fabulous. Cool. Uh, And she she probably knew. She probably did. She was older, but I'm sure she... Hooked well, up with them together. at some point and was like, hey, come perform at this thing. I'm, you know, come perform at that thing. And they were like, Probably. okay, whatever you say. And they knew lady. each other. But yeah. yeah, she was amazing. I wasn't sure if you knew her because, again, she's a poet, an author, uh, and did all sorts of stuff. And um, she was a whole mix. A yeah. Whole mix. And but I, no, felt, I, I felt d- bad I that her, her mom died at when she was nine months old. Oh, so sadness. I think she was interested. And I mean, she, she knew her aunt and took care of her mm-hmm. elderly aunt. And that's why she was interested in that part of her heritage. Um, and the fact that she wrote on it and mm-hmm. kind of experienced how, even at the Supreme Court state level, mm-hmm. um, the the case didn't turn favorably. Yeah. And after that happened, I think she just you know turned to the other side mm-hmm. of her existence and was like, "How what can I do to help with this?" Because yeah. obviously, the Native American, yeah, you know, that was it didn't end well. It's kind of a brick wall there. Mm-hmm. Not uh, yeah, but i didn't know about her but i it's funny because once again kind of with the nicholas brothers like i know the people that came after them or were surrounded by them or were influenced by them so like paul lawrence dunbar yeah, langston hughes like uh, you know these people that like i know right of and i really enjoyed when i was growing up learning about them mm-hmm. um but i didn't know about her in the same yeah, way the nicholas brothers and... everyone knows michael jackson janet jackson right and, you know but it's those people Debbie who started Allen. started yeah but it's like the root of their success kind of um that's really cool and the fact that i mean again she was a single woman for like 20 years mm-hmm. working all sorts of jobs and still writing on her experience there very unique experience so that's pretty cool you check out her work pretty cool that was the the, the meat part of that the was podcast. so if you want to turn it off <laughs> the now, serious part you know they probably knew each other somehow that connected and then <laughs> i'm sure gabby's left field I, uh, uh person will really this guy this trick be. this trickster finally this trickster um, i'm not ready for this so it's but. really his life is not all that like well, it's kind of – okay, here's the thing. Things that are funny to me I know aren't funny to a lot of other people. Well, like whipping water. That's funny to me. That should be funny <laughs> to you. But um, but this guy – some historical figures I just find really funny. So this this guy I think just got dealt like kind of like a bad hand in life. Not 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 his whole life. He had a good he had a good life up until like the last few years. But okay, so – He's he's dead, right? Oh, uh, yeah. When oh. I tell you the year, you're – Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so my, uh, my guy right here is – and – He's French. So this French name, I'm going to do my best. My okay. French knowledge extends from ballet I did and my Native American bit, Les Miserables. So, so I'm <laughs> very limited. If it's not a ballet term, I'm hard-pressed to understand what they're saying. Um, so his name is Thomas de Mehy, I think. How, how is spelled? M A. Well, his last name is M-A-H-Y. So I'm going to say Mehy. Mm. But he was a marquis, which is like a nobleman. It's mm-hmm. like a above, it's like a, like kind of like a duke. Not a peasant. Not He's a not a peasant. He's an aristocrat. Aristocat. Aristocat, like the movie. <laughs> he was aristocrat. Okay. So much. Um, but so his name is Thomas de Mehi. He was the Marquis de Favois, I'm going to say. F A V R A S. But that didn't sound as butchered as the last name. I'll give you I'll, Thomas no, de no Mehi, Marquis no, de no, Favois. No. That sounds pretty good, right? That sounds pretty good. I know Marquis is Marquis de and then Favois, but I'm going to assume that's how you pronounce it. Doesn't really matter. All right. So. He was an aristoc- arist- almost an aristocrat. Aristocrat like mm-hmm. in uh, he was born. He was born. Did I even say when he was born? Yeah, you told me he, he ain't was alive, born. So. Well, he's not. He's not alive. He was born in 1744. <laughs> as I don't a, think he's alive. <laughs> uh, uh, he was a noble, 
And he could trace his family line back to the 12th century. So he's one of those people. He, that, like, he said he's, Ancestry.com. He said. He's a one. He's a one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's, yeah he's an Enneagram one. But he was one of those. It was, he was from one of those families that could trace their lineage all right. the way back. Like right. he, So you so know, you know he there's had, some incest going not on. Poor. You know. Um, oh, yeah. They're not poor. <laughs> but it's, okay, you know what's weird, though? Is that I, when I read that he was a nobleman, one of the websites I went to also confirmed he was a nobleman, but then said his family was impoverished. Well, maybe by the time, and I was like, like then how are you a thing, marquee? There's so many noblemen, but but either they wasted their money. I suppose when you're rich, you can't. Manage but he grew your money. up rich, so I, I think this website just didn't know what they were talking about, or didn't know it what the word be, impoverished could be means. Incest, incest. It's like it's like. Uh, but I was like, how Spanish, are you impoverished? The ha- uh, Habsburgs, they got that oh, jaw. So yeah, well. he no, it wasn't incest to the to, to the point that you had any physical deformity. No, no, no. I'm saying impoverished, like they were. I know, I know. Okay, I'm okay, 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 like okay. okay. You, yeah. But, uh, okay. Well, anyway, he was a, he was a marquis. <laughs> he's rich. He's, he's, he's rich. rich. He grew. He I must assume he grew up rich. He could trace his family line back to the 12th century. Um, he was high his through his life. He was high ranking in the military. He retired in 1775 from the military, but he was known as a warrior. He worked for King Louis's brother or something. Like he was very high up. Oh, the King Louis. Rank. Well, it's gonna be kind of about him right now. He married a princess <laughs> from some Aww. other random country. I don't Did know. Did they how. stay married? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, she and he was heavily involved in politics um, throughout his life. But let me back up a little bit because that's kind of an overview of his life. But now we're going to get into like the situation that I find funny. Okay. So, um, um, so it goes back to the revolu- or revolutionary war. Well, it does go back to the American <laughs> Revolutionary War because okay. after the American Revolutionary War ended in uh, the late 18th century, mm-hmm. yes, France helped the U.S. France helped, right? Afterward, obviously, France was extremely in debt. <clears throat> we thank you. Uh, thanks, France. Uh, um, but they were extremely in debt because of their involvement helping with mm-hmm. the Revolutionary War in America. And it left the uh, country of France pretty much bankrupt. Love um, that. However, even though they were pretty much bankrupt and the people were starving and you didn't have a middle class, it was just the richy, rich, rich mm-hmm. and the poor living on the street. Right. Um, mm-hmm. King Louis the Sixteenth still spent a boatload of, of money. Of course he did. Because he's it's an like idiot. Marie Antoinette. Yeah, him and his wife are, can suck it. Um, his country was starving, but he was just like, but I need a new pony or something. So also, it's because they, I mean, they lived in their own world. You don't even see those people. Well, that's not They're my They're like fault. completely oblivious to the existence of like 99% of the population. Not my, not my problem. Go outside, baby. Go outside and go look around. Anyway. <laughs> they didn't. Um, so for two decades after... The Revolutionary War ended in America. Bankruptcy. Yeah, France experienced poor harvest, drought, cattle disease, and drastic bread prices. They prob not drastic. Drastic bread. bread Not drastic. I put it in quotes. That was from this website that I researched. This guy, quote unquote, drastic bread prices. Um, Obviously, citizens were like super pissed off at the royal family, and they wanted to kill them. Right? They're probably like, "Why do we help the U.S.?" So obviously, this is how the French Revolution began. Mm -hmm. On July Fourteenth, seventeen eighty nine, a Parisian crowd seized the Bastille, which is now known as Bastille Day. And the French people regard this as like kind of like their Independence Day, I suppose. Um, but um, go off, yeah, okay, France. Um, so they they seized the Bastille, which was a state prison used by the kings of France. Um, oh, there goes the camera. They said I, I thought we would be able to make it professional. They said but. drastic bread prices. No, um, camera just died. It's fine. So okay, the French Revolution started, uh, and this was July Fourteenth once again. Um, towards the end of the revolution, it, this still has to do with the Marquis de Favois, but toward the end of the revolution in 1799, France needed skilled individuals to help save the king and, and the revolts because it had been going on for like a decade. Mm-hmm. And so Oof. the upper class was really like tired of it. And they were like super pissed off that these poor people <laughs> wanted food. Like it was super inconvenient. Um, so one of the peeps <laughs> that was recruited to end the revolution was Thomas de Mehi, Marquis de what Favois. What'd he do? What'd he do? So, um, he returned because he, he was around all of Europe and he was, he worked international politics and stuff. So he returned to France and he was super like pissed off with all the violence in the French revolution. And like, because he's an upperclassman and he was like, Oh my God, I hate these peasants. Um, Obviously, citizens were continuing to blame the royal family, which they should have. Um, So Favois was like, you know what? I'm going to organize a way to like, to get troops and like kill all these peasants and suppress this revolution that's been going on for so long. Why are we including this man in our episode? Okay, because it gets funny at the end. I mean, this is all still kind of funny to me because it's like he sucks, but he sucks as a person. Boo, favois, whatever. Okay, so he met with this other really rich guy. He was like a count or something to like devise this plan to save King Louis and Marie Antoinette and their kids. 
Obviously, that didn't work out very well because they were beheaded. <laughs> but that's where we're at. He right wasn't now. successful. Uh, he but... was not successful. Okay. So the plan that he had with this other rich man was that he would lead a force of thirty thousand soldiers to end the revolution. Oh, because he was part of the military. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay. He had a lot of influence in the military and politics and stuff like that. So he's like, "Oh my god, I'm totally gonna kill." Like, this is his plan. First of all, <laughs> this is his plan. He's like, "I'm just gonna get thirty thousand troops in here. I'm gonna kill the finance minister who was super for the people. He was gonna kill the mayor um, of Paris." And he was going to kill the commander of the city's new National Guard, which a lot of people know is Marquis de Lafayette. So this is like an internal coup that's going on right now. He's like, well, I'm, he's not even, kind of. I mean, I mean again, the king was like, yeah, do it. Because right, he's right, like, right. I can't even get out of like my freaking castle because like, these peasants will probably <laughs> Although kill me. You didn't, but you didn't even. Okay. So, yes. This, yeah. I love, dude, France is so cool. French history to me is like hilarious. Okay. So, <laughs> so Favois was in this other rich guy that he like hooked up with. They were like, we're going to put an end to your food supply unless the people of France show signs of defeat like we're just gonna cut off your food supply and like starve y'all out um mm-hmm. however obviously him and this other rich guy and whoever else they involved didn't like keep this under wraps very well because rumors started to spread that they were planning all this and obviously the like the french people were like heck no like you're an idiot right. so they arrested him and his wife and imprisoned them like immediately <laughs> so then <laughs> Sorry. failure failure so the rich guy that he had been working with this count or whatever was like immediately betrayed him he was like yeah he it was his idea wow it was it was thomas's plan you can't plan. trust nobody no and he was like yeah screw this guy like i'm just trying to like not be like dead right now and he sided with the people of france so he betrayed the marquis de favois i like it okay so then he was he was he was in prison for two months and they're like going over the evidence and stuff but there was insufficient evidence in his trial and even this editor he was an anarchist he was an anarchist editor and so he was sided with the people right he hated the government even he said that, and he wrote for a Republican newspaper, I thought this was funny, called Revolution de Paris. <laughs> he really was just like, I don't know why I would come up with a different name. Like, this newspaper is literally like about the revolution in, in Paris. Um, he publicly stated that the evidence against Favois was insufficient. So even this guy who, like, hated him was like, so yeah, but Knox, it makes dude, no Knox. It's Amanda Knox. Dude. Um, but anyway, no one really cared, and he was charged with organizing like that. troops <laughs> um, that were instructed to attack Paris, even though there was literally no evidence found that they were ever even formed. Like, they didn't even – the rumor spread so fast they couldn't even get it started, forming troops. I like it. Um, so on February 18th, 1790, he was sentenced to be hanged. Um, before this, he even went to, like, the people and was like, I will give you more dirt on this count guy, the rich guy that sided with you at the very last minute to save his own like ass or whatever. Um, but they're they didn't, not very good friends. No, they, they but guess. they didn't want to listen. So his sentence was carried out the next day, uh, February 19th, 1790. And, That's coming up, uh, dude. He commented, yeah, it is coming up. He commented, Favois commented, I pity you exceedingly if the simple <laughs> testimony of two men is enough to make you condemn an innocent person. He was really bothered. He was like, this and- is stupid. But this is my favorite part. Oh, so after he's dead, this is your favorite part? No, no, no. He's not dead yet. Oh, okay, okay, okay. He, that was what he said His little when he was sentenced. Yes. And so it's sentenced to be hanged, which I was like, they obviously didn't want to use the guillotine, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> he was sentenced to be hanged. But um, so then he's like standing, like, of course, you know, public execution sort right. of thing in, in France, in most places. And so he's like on the little thing, the platform, and everyone's looking at him, right? And mm-hmm. he's going to be hanged, right? So. I'm not ready. His death warrant was given to him. I think they read the death warrant out loud to everybody and they handed the paper to him for Favois to read for himself. Oh, oh wow. To just be like, you can it's dramatic. just read, which I'm like, what does it matter, dude? Yeah, dude. You, re- I'm dying. Like, I'm literally, the noose is around my neck, but that's okay. So they were like, here you go. Here's for you to read. His last words <laughs> in this life <laughs> before he was made. Wait, tell me, what do you think his last words were? I have no idea at this point. He's just, he's really bothered. So <laughs> he's, no, I don't screw y'all. He's, but, no, he's, <laughs> His last words were Favois. When okay, before you even say this, when did you find out about the story? I don't remember. I just was one of the, it's one of those things that Dude, I like had wow. in the back of my okay. mind for okay. like a few years and it's really funny to me. Okay. He his last words, his last sentence he said after reading his death warrant to him okay. silently to himself, not out oh, loud. Okay, okay. He was reading it and he <laughs> hands it back to the executioner or the guy and he says, I see that you have made three spelling mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> and then they hang up and he's dead. Dude, but he wow. said that was. And then, <laughs> so then, 
um, after he he was hanged, then they cut his head off and put it on Spike and paraded it around Paris. And uh, the citizens of Paris did not honor him. (laughs) And that's that's his life. Here's here's my question. Did they fix the simple (laughs) fact? He said one, two, three. He said, I see that you have made three spelling mistakes. <laughs> and then they were like, all right, and just hung him. That was his that's the only thing he had to say. He didn't have anything else to say. Like people that of it was France, wrong. I failed or- you, or I'm sorry I betrayed you. King Louis, I tried my best to save you. No. Hey dude, you made three spelling mistakes, dude, you idiot. Was- and then they were just like, All right, dude, hang you. <laughs> and he was hung, and that was the end of his life. And his wife was still in prison. She was exiled to wherever okay, she so came she's from. Alive. Yeah, they didn't kill her, but they were like, you can't Maybe come she back ended here. Up being a grammar teacher. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so that's uh, Thomas de Mehi, Marquis de Favois. <laughs> I love how this is a horrible person for all intents yeah, dude, and purposes. But you were like, since he mentioned spelling, I thought that was hilarious as his last thing. Uh, I what kills see me is like that you have I made mean, three spelling mistakes. The f- in his the death, death sentence, him. you're you're reading your death warrant, and all you have to say is. I see Dude, you in front of everybody. Had an uneducated person write it. Obviously. He was like, you... It, it, wow. Dude. I thought that was hilarious. I still think it's hilarious that he was like, I see you've made three spelling mistakes. And they were like, "Yep, all right, hang him. And then they cut his head I'm off and crying. paraded it on a stick around Paris. <laughs> like, Dude, French people are like... What was the French Revolution? Bounds. What are we... Like, the French Revolution... And they didn't really have even sufficient evidence. They were just kind of like, yeah, we think they just, this guy... Which again, it, like, it's probably right, but... And they were probably the French, correct, yes. but the, the French court system was really a. Uh, it wasn't even really a court system at this they point. Couldn't it was just write, anarchy. They couldn't even write a death sentence uh. with no spelling mistakes. Yeah, dude, who so, wrote this thing? So this is your native tongue, presumably, and you can't write a death sentence without. I know you don't have Google. I and know this, you don't have, and this man who's concerned about dying, can count three of them. He obviously wasn't that concerned because he went through and counted. He looked and he said, that's a spelling error. Like, he was not paying attention to his death sentence at all. He was just reading for, like, grammar. Mm. He was he was editing as he went. That would be me. He'd be like, let me see this. Hmm, I'd be this like, let me comma. see. I'd be like, you know what? Who you wrote missed, this? You missed a comma. Yep. I'd Take be like, uh, this needs an Oxford comma in here. Is this an MLA format? <sighs> Shoots me. Like, all right. Well. I, uh, so this, that, is like, that, uh, this is on a whole new level <laughs> from whipping the ocean. That's the last thing I was expecting. I should have I should have guessed. I should have guessed. But, uh. I think those are like the best famous last words in all of history. Like I how need, petty I of a, a movie. person. I need a movie. I need a movie on his life. Of a terrible person, but just the ending scene. Three. Yeah. But I had to set it up. I wonder if he held up three fingers and was like, you've got three. I hope, I'm now sure everyone in the crowd this. was like, what did he say? What? Dude. And he's like, I said they made three spelling errors. <laughs> and they were um, like, oh, I'm, okay. <laughs> That's it. Okay. That's all I got. It's a little goof. <laughs> a little goof. That's gonna be my uh, death. That's gonna like, be my the trivia. Spelling's funny. That's gonna be my trivia at a uh, party. I'll be like, hey, do you I'll guys remember. know Thomas de Mehi, Marquis de Favois? What were his last words? Do you guys know his last words? Uh, you know, I'm when like, he was yes. about to be killed, was yes. I see you have made. Not even like, hey, you made. He's like, I, I see, see you have made three spelling errors. I would want. How does that sound like in French? I do not know. Look up Google Translate. I want, I want to. Let me see. I'm sure it sounds very poetic and very romantic. But um, Let's I don't see. speak French, so anything I sounds. see you have made. Oh, can't spell hmm. even in English. Three You're like the guy who wrote his mistakes. death warrant, dude. dude. Oh, I want. Okay, let me spell out the word three. Yeah, because I can't say. Okay. Put, it up, put it up to the mic again. That. <laughs> I want to hear that. I want to hear that. Je vois que tu as fait trois fautes d'orthographe. Okay, she sounds like she's had like five drinks. Well, because when you hit it again, it goes but, slower. If you oh, hit it again, it? Okay, okay, it'll okay. go. Je vois que tu as fait trois fautes d'orthographe. So that's what his last words. I think that's good. I think. And then he was hung. He said what he wanted to say. He he. That's he all he obviously issues. wanted to say. And your last like ten seconds of life. You're like this is it, and that's what you say. I mean, I think he was forty five when he was killed. He was like very young. At the sweet young ripe age. Do you want to see a picture of him? 
There's a picture. Well, of I mean, like Wald, a yes, drawing painting, of painting. Yeah, painting. I'm very interested. So this is what he said. A screenshot. And uh, a the screen. camera's dead, so you can't see how this man looks like. Yeah. But um, he looks he, like a jabroni, here's right? Here's the thing. He looks like the guy who would say that. He looks like he looks the, like a guy a who pretentious would say like ass. Like, yeah, dude, he looks uh, like it. I thought that was quite funny. Anyway, I don't know where you heard the story, but now everyone knows this story. It's just one of those Such things, kind of like thing. with the people within the ocean that I've, I've like. I don't you know. Just, I learned at some you point. Can't, like, and wrap your head around it. No, but I thought that was pretty wow. hilarious. That, what a good that that's during a good little during party the joke. French Revolution, and you know you're going to go down in history, whether for good or for bad, and that's what you say. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love. French he was okay with it. He was okay with it. You I'm know sure when I mean? that when word got back to King Louis that that's what he said, he was probably like this idiot. <laughs> and then obviously King Louis and Marie Antoinette were executed. Also, so you know, dude, f- French history is messy. Like we're all messy, but. Yep, the French Revolution was an especially messy time. But, uh, and that's okay. One other thing Les Miserables does not take place during the French Revolution. A lot of people think it does. It does not. It has nothing to do with the French what Revolution. Time, what time does it take place in? Well, it begins in 1817, but the part of the, of the story where mm. there is a quote unquote revolution going on, that was not the French Revolution. That was the June Rebellion of 1832. Mm. It was an insurrection that lasted three days, and everybody was slaughtered. So they tried to start another French Revolution and with barricades, said, and uh, they were they were like three thousand men were like killed or something like that. But that was an eighteen. That was the June Rebellion. Once again, of 1832. it's just the French being messy. Yeah, just the French okay. being messy. So I know it's hard to tell one French event from another because everyone's always getting it's slaughtered massacred. and killed. But like uh, insane and spelling guillotines. mistakes. Yeah, but, uh, but um, but it was different. It was different time. It was different. Okay. So we. I hope you all have been very educated. I've been educated today. I'm. I'm the only thing that, now you have the that only knowledge. thing that stays in my head is like the thing you pull out of like left field. But <laughs> it's okay. Now I, I know the whipping story and the <clears throat> spelling mistake. What's your favorite? Which one do you prefer? Honestly, I wish. Those would be my final words. I, I see you have made like, three spelling errors. Yeah, I think that's that's a good one. I like that. Like, like the fact that I would think that it's because he's like losing his mind that he would, no, out of just, everything, point out the three spelling errors. I think he was but just he, bothered. But he says it so. But he says it so like relaxed and that's like all he said eloquently. It wasn't like he was rambling. He just that's no. all he said. He was just. I think he was bothered that the peasants were killing him, and that he did not succeed in his efforts to save the king and queen and their stupid kids. I think that's what the problem was. Mm-hmm. And that he was like, wow, these peasants are killing me, a nobleman. So and they can't even spell. You. So your government's totally going to fail because you don't even know how to write words, right. you mm-hmm. idiots. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yep. That's all I got. Do you have anything else to add to anything today? <sighs> that That is a no. That's a no to, to, end, to end, on. end on. Okay. Well, we then, opened with a goof, ended with a goof. We, we started with a goof, uh, ended with a goof. And we had a lot, a lot of good things to say a lot of people you should research yep, yep i'm going yep. to see if these two people knew each other do it are mentioned. and uh if you ever find yourself about to be beheaded maybe notice more than the spelling but i mean maybe maybe to each their own have obviously. a better thing to say to the people that. because obviously that. that was written down in history so yeah Someone standing there was like, let me write this down. This is good it's like stuff. like iconic. People Whoever 300 years from now will eat this up, dude. Iconic. Obviously, you did. I did. We lost our lives there for a second. Uh, it was back. like silent but for like dude, I'm, <laughs> 10 seconds. Um, anyway. All right. Well. Fantastic. Dude, review these, us. These episodes are. I think they're the, my favorite. The historical <laughs> figure as episode are like. Uh, um, I don't know how we're going to top this one. This is we, a, we all this had is really a good, good I mean, yeah. we did. We did. We did. Yeah. That was Started good. with a bang, ended with a bang, and the middle was great. I love it. Yeah. Okay. It gets better every time. Well, review us on Apple Podcasts. <clears throat> Give us those five stars. Give us those five stars because this episode is Go to was our five YouTube stars. channel. Go to our YouTube. Oh, we never said that. Monetize Go to our, Okay. Go. We have like 13. Yeah. Stars. Go to our YouTube channel. We got 10. And if you like watching people who do podcasts, you can watch us there. You creep. And it ends, well, here you got 10 minutes oh, of like a well, black screen. But you won't see us laughing ugly. Last so. week's episode, we, we, we missed that. We missed that opportunity. But yes, yeah. last week's episode was all the way. All the way. To the end. Yeah. And we'll try to do that. I'll be like, Gabby, we got end at like the 45 minute mark, okay. not the hour We'll mark. try. We'll try. To be like, we can do this. We can try to do that. But All do right. that. Oh, sign up for the email. Instagram. Go. Follow us at underscore change by degrees. Hmm. That's all we got. Hmm. And then catch us next week with whatever we got. Yep. 
Mm, I don't, I don't know what, what's happening next week, but we're gonna talk about the wheels of time, and that's not when we're doing that next I week. I know, I know, but we got to. I, I know, but we're not doing Linguini. that next week. Linguine. Linguine. Oh, I was yeah. like, what? dude, she forgot I everything forgot about the series. Everything. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. We might go watch some TV. Okay. I just... I'm gonna throw her off the deck so she enjoys the heat. Nice. And we're gonna see you next week. Okay. That. Uh, bye. Uh, bye. I thought you were gonna start rapping there. Stop. Oh, okay. We're still live. Now I'm gonna say, how do you say bye in French? Au revoir. Au revoir. Right? Au revoir. Hey. Au revoir. That was a good accent. I did. I, I, I don't Au even know if I'm revoir. right. <clears throat> oh, a dog. He said goodbye to. <laughs> Au revoir. Okay, that is. It gets <laughs> you say progressively it? <laughs> worse. Can you say it? Can you Au say it? Au revoir. Okay.